Today we will be talking about one of the most important features of Open Studio, and that is the space types. And this is the space types tab. Open Studio uses space types to apply all of the information that you need to a space. And then that gets those spaces get converted to thermal zones and those thermal zones get passed to energy plus for the simulation. Now energy plus doesn't have space types. <clears throat> so you have to create each space in, separately in energy plus with open studio, you can create what's called a space type. And the space type has all of the information of the room. It has how many people are in the room during the day. It has um, electric lighting that gets turned on and off throughout the day, um, electrical plug loads, gas loads, infiltration, um, and it has the uh, ventilation required ventilation rates for the room and all manner of schedules that turn equipment on and off or show occupancy or activity levels. And you can apply those to the space. Um, and uh, then, like I said, it goes to thermal zones. Now, Open Studio has a parent child relationship with a lot of these features, including space types. And what Open Studio does before it passes information to Energy Plus, it looks at the highest level at thermal zones. And the thermal zones are comprised of spaces. So, Energy Plus will first look at this level, the spaces level. And you can apply very specific information to an individual space at this level. So if you have six classrooms and one of the classrooms has say two extra people, you can apply it at this level. Or one of the classrooms has a lot more lighting, you can apply it at this level. So this is the first place Open Studio looks. Uh, and all of this information under properties, loads, surfaces, shading, air flows, all of that information, that's where Open Studio looks first. If it cannot find that information, Open Studio will then look at the Facilities tab. And the Facilities tab is a handy place where you can assign a generic default schedule set. So, uh, a construction set. So if, if the building is constructed of all the same materials, you can assign a default construction set here. Same with schedule sets and space types. And, and these three will get passed to everything on the spaces tab. And if Open Studio still cannot find that information here, Open Studio will finally look at the space types tab. And this is the lowest you can go. And the space types tab is, is the, the, is the, uh, it's the great thing about open studio. So what we will be doing is creating a space type. Um, we will be creating a classroom. And we will be using the um, Australian Building Code, the Building Code of Australia, National Construction Code 2019, as a reference, because we don't actually have a project that we're working on right now. So we will be constructing a, um, a reference building, as what the code says. Um, and we'll be using that information later on to model a real building and, and compare it to the reference building. So let's go ahead and go to the plus symbol. We will create a new space type. And for this example, we will be doing a classroom and the construction code has um, classrooms. separated into two separate types of classrooms. Um, there is, well, let's see, there's general classrooms. 
which have an area per person. And um, the, the ventilation code has it separated into two different types of classrooms, um, classrooms for persons um, up to 16 years of age and classrooms for persons over 16 years. So we're just gonna do classroom for persons under 16 years of age. <clears throat> and that's what we we doing here. The first thing that we can input is a default construction set. Now, we're not going to put that in here because we're going to use this whole model that we create here as a template file, as a library file. And depending on where you build the structure in Australia, this, this um, construction type will be different. So um, we're just going to create um, a generic space type for now. And this can apl be applied to all constructions built um, no matter where the climate zone is. The next is default schedule sets. We'll get into this a little bit later. The next is design specification outdoor air. So we need to create an outdoor air ventilation require a required ventilation rate for the room. And so we can go to the, our library, click design specifications outdoor air, and we'll just we can drag in any one of these. We're going to rename it and, and reassign the values anyway. Drag this in here. And we will call this based on the um, Australian um, ventilation code, 2012-1668.2. Uh, um, and for this, um, the code requires that we have 12 liters per second per person here. And the code also requires that we have a minimum airflow per area. of 0.35 liters per second per square meter. And the code says that we have to sum those two. So um, it's gonna calculate the area, the floor area ventilation rate. It's gonna calculate all the people in the room and multiply that by this um, per person flow rate. And then it's gonna add these two together. If you have uh, if you have a, a different application where you're calculating the maximum, you would select that here, and oh, and Energy Plus will calculate this one, and then it will calculate this one, and it will choose the highest of the two. So that's how you create a design specification outdoor air. So it's a ventilation rate. The next is space infiltration design flow rates or space infiltration effective leakage areas. Um, these are a little bit different. So um, we will go, we were just gonna create an infiltration design flow rate. And so we'll go to our library tab, design flow rates. We'll just drag in one of these. We're just gonna rename it anyway. And we will select it rename it and this we're going to specify air changes per hour that's how the australian code has it written and we are going to specify the air changes per hour right here as one although the australian code um, reference building has uh, air changes that vary throughout the day based on if the air handler equipment is on or off. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a schedule to this that modulates the air changes per hour. And it will be multiplied by, or it's, it's gonna be a fraction that's multiplied by one. So let's do that. Let's go to the schedules tab. Schedules plus fractional and the fractional is a value from zero to one. And we'll click apply. And um, 
what we need to do is, well, first we can, we can rename this based on the appropriate code reference. And for an Australian reference building, school building, um, it has a schedule that starts the HVAC equipment at seven. So we're gonna hover over the seven right here. We can zoom in 15 minute increment, hover over the seven and double click it to make a split. And the building is shut down at nighttime and the ventilation rate at when the equipment is shut down is 0.7 air changes per hour. And while the building is operational, what was the building operating? No, oh, that was, let's see, page 343. The, while the, while the HVAC equipment is operating, it's 0.35 air changes per hour. So we'll do 0.35, enter. And that will modulate the infiltration flow rate throughout the day. So this fraction is gonna multiply by our one air changes per hour. And then this fraction is gonna by, multiply by our one air changes per hour. So let's go back to the spaces tab, space types tab. And we'll go to loads and you can see that there's this infiltration applied to our space type and then we can go to my model and um, rule set schedules and you can see this is the schedule that we just created for infiltration we'll drag that into our schedules so now it's multiplying this schedule by our design flow rate which is one air changes per hour so that's how you add infiltration to your space type. Our next task will be to install loads into our space type and you will drop your loads here. Um, they could be electrical loads, lighting loads, and uh, people occupancy heat loads, as well as uh, an internal thermal mass load. And to do that, we need to go to the loads tab. And the first load definition that we will create is uh, electrical plug load. So go ahead and go down to the bottom and click uh, the add new object plus button. And for this, we will need to go to the construction code or a reference building and page here table 2l says that uh, reference building a 9b school um, has five watts per square meter internal heat gain from a appliances and equipment <clears throat> so we will just call this five watts per square meter for an electrical plug load and we will just rename this to our 9B school and we'll reference the um, applicable construction code table. And um, it was five watts per square meter um, plug load and the radiant fraction we will just say is 50%. There is <clears throat> no latent fraction. It's going to be all dry heat. And if you, um, you can also specify a fraction of the load that is lost. Um, for whatever reason, if, if you've got equipment mounted on a wall and that equipment is losing some of the heat elsewhere, um, outside of that space, you can specify that here. So that's what we'll call an electrical um, plug load. And 
Next, we will create a lighting load. So let's go to the lights definition. Again, we will do a plus sign right here. And we will just, let's see, um, we need to go to the construction code again, uh, page 379. <coughs> and this shows maximum illumination power densities for various um, space types on this table J6.2. So we need to find our um, school general purpose right here. It is uh, maximum is uh, 4.5 watts per square meter. So we will do that in here 4.5 watts per square meter. And <clears throat> um, for a typical light fixture, um, the luminous efficiency is going to be twenty five percent for a typical T8 LED light bulb and we will say the rest of the, um, the balance of the the load will be a radiant load and we won't have any return air fraction on this one um, this will be dependent on fixtures, um, and since we're doing a reference building for the code, it just says a 4.5 watts per square meter load. However, if you do have fixtures that are um, inset into the ceiling or uh, in, inset into a return air plenum, you would have a percentage of that load going to the return air stream right here. And so we will rename this based on the table, um, the construction code table that we just referenced. And then finally, um, we need to do a people definition um, for a, a general classroom. And again, this is on the um, construction code. Um, and let's go to people definition and we will do a plus here. And this is our code reference. It's gonna be table one, D1.13 uh, on the construction code. And that is this table here. <coughs> For a school, general classroom, the area per person is two square meters. So we will do um, floor area per person, two square meters per person. And if your code um, has a, uh, a comfort stipulation in it, you are supposed to track um, a, a predicted mean vote thermal comfort for the occupants. You can um, select the ASHRAE 55 comfort warnings on here. And uh, we will just do zone averaged and you can uh, add an extensible group here. And this is the, um, this this is the algorithm for whichever type of um, calculation you're doing for the predicted mean vote um, and we'll just do the um, we'll just use the adaptive 
ASHRAE 55 for this example. So that's how you add uh, people definitions for a space type or, or just people definitions that you can add to a space type later. And then um, finally, um, we need to create uh, an internal mass definition. So we will go down to internal mass um, and then we will click plus. And this just um, represents all of the furnishings inside the room. It's, it's a thermal mass or, or a thermal flywheel, if you will. Um, so the, uh, the internal furnishings absorb heat um, throughout the day or night and then uh, re-radiate that heat um, at some later time or, or um, protracted out over some later time. So we will just call this classroom furnishings and uh, we're just going to do um, a surface area per space floor area of four. Um, and this, this will be kind of dependent on um, how thick of a material you are creating. And you can see that um, you can drag in a construction um, from your library and and, uh, and drop it in here. So, you know, if you have wooden furnishings, you might use a wood construction, or if you have metal furnishings, you might use metal. Um, for our example, we're going to create one. Um, and in order to do that, um, you have to go to uh, constructions the constructions tab and we'll go to constructions and um, oh it looks like I've already created one so but anyway you would just click a plus down at the bottom we can just we'll just name this classroom furnishings and um, I just used 25 millimeter wood from the library so you can go to the library tab and you can go to materials and you would just drag in a, um, a typical material from your library. So I just used 25 millimeter wood material. And like I said, um, it's uh, your th internal mass is, is going to be based on how thick that material is and, and what the uh, specific heat capacity is for, for storing heat. So let's go back. We're going back to the loads tab and internal mass definitions. And I've already got that put into um, my model. So let's go to my model tab and we can go to constructions and then we'll just drag that classroom furnishings into the construction there. So that's how you create an internal mass definition. Now that we've got all of our loads um, specified, we can go back to our um, we can go back to our space types tab, and let's go to loads. And the first one um, we want to drag in is the electrical plug loads definition. So we can go to my model and let's go to electrical equipment definitions. Here is the, um, the classroom electrical plug load definition that we created. We'll drag that and drop that into the definition here. And we probably want to rename this to something more applicable to this particular classroom. The next one we want to drop in is a lighting load definition. Let's go to my model lights. Here's the lighting, the T8 LED lighting that we created. So we can drop that into the definition here. And we'll just rename this to classroom less than 16 years age light. And this is based on that construction code that we referenced. 
And then um, the last one that we need to do, go to my model and people definitions, and we will drag in a people density definition. And we said it was like two um, square meters per person. We'll rename that to people. And then finally, um, back to my model tab, we need to um, drag in our classroom furnishings uh, internal thermal mass definition. And just rename this to classroom furnishings. Okay, so now we have all of our loads added to this space type. The next step is to create schedules for each of these loads. So a schedule that turns the electrical equipment on and off inside the classroom, a schedule that turns the lights on and off, and an occupancy schedule for when the people enter and exit the classroom at the end of the day. Go ahead and do that. We would need to go to our schedules tab to create the schedules. And let's go to the schedules tab at the top. And there is our infiltration schedule that we created previously. So let's <clears throat> first create an occupancy schedule. Um, so for the uh, Australian Construction Code, the um, schedules for a reference building are uh, are are specified using this table 2j for a class 9b school and you can see we're going to be looking at occupancy here monday through friday so um let's see We need to create a, um, a fractional schedule. And let's just do fractional zero to one. So zero being zero occupants and one being fully occupied. Click apply. And we're just going to rename this um, based on the National Construction Code Table 2J. Um, occupancy schedule for a uh, class 9b school and um, the table says that uh, starting at 7 the more 7 in the morning it is at 5% so let's kind of zoom in on the table we'll go to 15 minute increments we'll drag this over to 7 in the morning we'll double click to create a divider so it starts out at zero occupancy, so we'll hit zero, enter, and from seven in the morning to eight in the morning, it is 5%. Let's put another divider here, and we'll, we'll uh, type um, 0 0.05 for 5%. And then from eight in the morning to nine in the morning, it's at 75%. So I'll do 0.75, and then from 9 in the morning all the way to noon, it is 90%. And then from noon to, noon to 2, it is 50%. And then from 2 to 3, it is 90%. And then from 3 to 4, it is 70%. And then 
from four to five is 50%. And then from five to eight is 20%. And then from eight to nine, it is 10%. And then it is finally 5% to midnight. Okay, let's zoom out to hourly here so we can see our total occupancy profile for the um, school. Next, we need to create a, um, a lighting schedule. Let's see. Let's go back up here. Whoops. So yeah, lighting schedule, artificial lighting schedule. So let's do a plus to create a new schedule. Again, it's going to be a fractional schedule, zero to one. And we will rename this to our lighting schedule based on the construction code reference building, table 2J. And um, to start the lighting schedule from midnight all the way to 7 is 5%. You can zoom in. 7, 5%. And then seven to eight is thirty percent, and then eight to nine is eighty per eighty five percent, and then nine to noon is ninety five percent, and then noon to two is 80 percent and then two to three is 95 percent and then three to four is 90 percent And then four to five is 70%. And five to eight is 20%. And eight to nine is 10%. And nine to midnight is 5%. So there's our lighting schedule. And then finally, um, we need to create a um, electrical equipment schedule, or rather just an equipment schedule. Um, we're just doing electrical equipment. So, we will do another fractional schedule and we'll rename it to our equipment schedule based on this table 2J. And again, um, we will look at appliances and equipment. Noon to 7 is 5%. Zoom in here. Seven to eight is thirty percent.
Okay, so there, there is our scheduled profile for uh, equipment inside the, the a typical school. And then finally, um, the last thing that we need to create um, is an occupant heat gain schedule. So this is this is multiplied by the number of occupants in the space throughout the day based on the the type of activity that um, those occupants in the space are doing um, and this is taken from the construction code table 2n can take a look at that. Uh, let's see, it's on this page here. Um, so 2N, the construction code for a reference building has internal heat gains for occupants and hot meals. Um, we will just be doing occupants um, and we are doing other applications and they have a default 75 watt of sensible heat gain and 55 watt of latent heat gain and this is this is um this is their their standard um this is the default value and then you can also adjust um it based on other metabolic rates and they have a reference here for table 45 on the design application manual 09, which um, that is located, let's see, on this table here. So if you have different um, occupancy types, the, the occupants will be using, um, will, be ha will have different metabolic rates. So uh, in a theater, everybody's seated. Um, they're not producing very much heat. Whereas uh, if you're talking about um, a bowling alley or um, athletics or um, any sort of heavy uh, factory manufacturing work, um, they're going to have higher metabolic rates. But for now, um, for, for this reference building um, and for a school, this, this, is, a, this is a pretty good... Um, a pretty good estimate um, for a sensible and latent heat gain. So we'll do 75 for sensible and 55 for latent. So let's go ahead and create a, um, a new uh, object or new schedule. And this one we're going to select activity level and it's it's uh it's calculated as a watts per person so we'll click apply and we will reference the uh, construction code table 2n and um the total watts per person comes out to 130 watts per person so and that um there's no schedule on that. The, um, the code just says that, uh, well, the schedule is, is dependent on, on the occupancy in the building. So the occupancy schedule that we created um, over here throughout the day. So that activity level gets multiplied by the number of people in the room throughout the day. So that's how you do, that's how you create an occupancy heat gain schedule. And then finally, we can go to our, go back to our space type and we'll go to the loads tab and we can assign these schedules. So for the electro equipment schedule, uh, we'll go to my model and let's see, um, rule set schedules and the equipment schedule will drag this in here and assign it to this um, electrical equipment load definition. Same thing for 
the lighting. We'll add the lighting schedule to that. And same thing for the occupancy schedule. And then that activity level schedule, 130 watts per person, we will drag in and add to the um, occupancy heat gain right here. So that um, fills in all of our information for our space types. Finally, um, we'll go back to the general tab. That's a time saving technique. So we have a um, default schedule set option right here. And we haven't filled that in. And this kind of takes the place of dragging and dropping all of those schedules on our load tab. So all of these schedules that we dropped in, all of these schedules right here can be combined into a schedule set. And that default schedule set could be dropped in here and it will automatically populate all of these schedules here. So let's go ahead and go back out and delete these for now. I will show you how to do a schedule set. So let's go to the schedules tab. And you can see that we have a schedule sets tab at the top here. And we will create a typical classroom schedule set. So let's go ahead and do the plus button and we'll rename this to the applicable code reference school schedule set. Um, hmm. Okay. And then what we will do is drop in the number of people. Let's go to my model and the occupancy schedule for classrooms is going to be this one here. So that's the number of people. The activity level, um, which is the, the occupant heat gain. So the activity level of the occupants uh, dictates how much heat each occupant puts into the space. And then we'll do a lighting schedule for that classroom, typical lighting schedule. And we will do the internal electrical equipment, or rather just equipment schedule for that room. And we can drop our infiltration schedule as well into here. And if you have any of these other equipment, you can drop those in there. Um, one thing that we might add to this is an HVAC operation schedule. And this is also based on the construction code. Oops. This is based on the construction code. Um, so they, they have, they have a, a typical air conditioning, or rather heating and air conditioning and ventilation schedule for a typical um, 9B school building for a reference building. And um, this tells when the, the HVAC equipment um, is, is allowed to turn on and off for the reference building. So we're going to have to create this schedule here in order to... Um, also include the information we need for a reference building for this code. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we will go back to schedules and we will call this, let's see, okay, let's, let's go do a plus and we'll do a fractional schedule apply. And we're just going to call this our HVAC operation schedule based on that construction code reference building table. 
And the reference building table says that the HVAC turns on at 7 in the morning. So what we'll do 0 up until 7. It turns on to 1 at 7 in the morning. And then it turns off at 6 p.m. in the evening. So that is when the HVAC system is allowed to operate. And then we'll go back to our schedule set and we can drop that um, HVAC operation schedule in there as well. Now let's go back to our space types tab. And like I said, or, or you will note that um, we don't have any schedules assigned to these loads, the infiltration, the lighting, plug loads, people loads, activity schedules. If we go to the general tab and we drop our schedule set in here, it will automatically assign all of those schedules to those, those definitions for that space type. So that's, that's the, the good thing about schedule sets. And that is how you create a space type in Open Studio. And then what you can do with this space type is you can assign this space type to all classrooms in your project. And all of those classrooms will be populated with all of these loads. That's how you create space types. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go through and create all of the um, space types for a typical school and create all of those schedules um, and uh, equipment loads. And then I will show you how to upload um, this to the building component library so that other people can use that as reference for their projects. Okay, so we've got all of these space types input here for um, mostly for an entire school. Storage rooms, workshops, uh, multi-purpose rooms, libraries, kitchens, uh, classrooms, conference rooms concludes our lesson on how to create space types and we will follow up this video with another video on how to upload those space types to the building component library and how to download those from the building component library so you can share with your colleagues uh, in other locations or in the office thank you please like and subscribe